Welcome back to the programme. We are talking to Robert Williams, dream analyst, hypnotist and mentalist uh, based in County Leash. Soon to move back to County Kildare. Kildare will give out his details in a minute. Just before I forget it, um, I asked earlier about uh, people dreaming about success in Gaelic matches or soccer matches or anything like that. And Thomas Keane texted in. I asked, what were the four teams that have never won a provincial title? And he said, Wicklow, Waterford, Kilkenny and Fermanagh. He's right with two, Wicklow and Fermanagh. Waterford did win, and so did Kilkenny win years ago. The trick was in the question, Tomás, and it's a good one for a pub quiz. I asked teams, not counties. So the other two are actually New York and London. So that might have caught a few people out. Um, before I forget it as well, um, Robert Oliver, our Breakfast Blah presenter, was mm -hmm. saying he dreams of elephants. Elephants? Elephants. Okay. Right, well, that's interesting because... When we, uh, He's in awe of elephants. Okay, well, when we dream of animals, we actually dream of the characteristic attached to the animal. So we think about an, an elephant, and of course the most obvious thing we think of is an elephant that we forget. It might just touch a little bit on Oliver's personality in terms of perhaps the way he operates and the way he maybe is as a person. So when we think of animals, we always try and find their main characteristics and we're actually thinking about that. It reminds me, Damon, there was a, there was a guy I texted you in earlier about he's having a situation where he's dreaming of being around mature women all the time. He's not of his own age group. When we dream of the opposite sex, we're dreaming of the characteristics of that. So he may very well be thinking of his feminine side. He may very well be thinking of some of the wisdom that they've acquired a little bit over and above him. And it may be subconscious is trying to tell him exactly that he should try and acquire some of that and listen to some advice. Can people read too much into dreams? Absolutely. And I suppose the purpose of me being here today is to try and give some, um, I suppose, realistic viewpoints to dreams. I'm not here to slag anybody, Damon, but I do think there's, like in any field, there's a lot of people who maybe chance their arm and maybe come up with all sorts of nonsense and I just feel as gobbledygook um, so I'm here to and try people might say you would say that yeah people might say I would say that but I hope in the last few moments you've seen that I'm, I'm trying as I said at the very beginning I've still got one for, I have still one from the mystery world of dreams because I've experienced it myself and I've met a lot of people who really and truly it's, uh, it's beyond comprehension but also there's a scientific uh, background to this and it's all about the subconscious trying to create images and, and emotions for us during the dream some people are texting us in to say their dreams are not fit for broadcasting. Larry Power uh -huh. says that, so they're obviously a bit rude there, some of the dreams. <laughs> How about a fella after six or seven pints? Damien, I was going to tell you, eat kill meat and cheese, but the cats have taken it from us. Uh, could you ask Robert, please, all I dream about is death and funerals. I lost my parents in my mid to late 20s and a lot of my relations in my 30s. So this person... Death is a recurring theme in this person's dreams. Yeah, when, when, when we're dreaming of death, we're actually dreaming a lot. Uh, well, what the experts say is that we, we tend to think about something that's going to be new life. There's something going to spark new life into, in, into our own personal lives. But of course, as I said to you earlier, I always listen to the language that's being used when somebody explains a dream. This is a very good way of explaining somebody's dream, Damien. But over the 20 odd years of doing it, I found the best way you can analyze somebody is to speak to the person and, and get some context of it all. Get into maybe the minutiae of the dream. But in this instance, um, it's also probably got to do with, obviously, again, the grieving process. Anyone who loses parents or somebody you love, you'll, you'll obviously think about them. But it's actually a good dream because death can actually mean something about to be reborn with inside themselves. Okay. Uh, flower dreams mean death, somebody has said. No, Is it? No, it's no. not. You, you, you see these books and they, they say, if you dream of this, yeah. that's what it means. That, that doesn't well, you see, it's, it's not one size fits all. It just isn't. And I've learned anything over the last 20 odd years. It's exactly that. As I said, growing up in Kildare, we were always told, you don't dream of you know, your teeth falling out. Don't dream of Westmead. And don't dream of Westmead, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, and then McAdwyer came along and all that. But, uh, <laughs> but apart from all of that, you know, people talk about don't dream of teeth. Uh, for me, it's just nonsense. Yeah. Teresa says, I have bad dreams when I drink too much wine. That goes back to your point about food Absolutely. and drink. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, and I mean, to, to suggest a little bit on precognitive dreams, one of the most probably famous stories of people dreaming of something and then it actually came true was a famous song that we're all familiar with. The guy woke up and he asked his fellow band members, did I ever play this chord pattern before? Did anyone play this music? And they all said, no, no. And that song turned out to be Yesterday by the Beatles. Paul McCartney actually dreamed. I remember hearing about that, yeah. Yesterday. And we can go even deeper than that. It's claimed that Dante had a dream about the Divine Comedy. And a footnote to that is that some of the, some of the transcripts were lost in the Divine Comedy. And Dante's son claims that he came back to him in a dream and told him where to find him. And then he found him. Whether we can believe that, but that's what they say. Wow. This lady asked me not to read out her name. Um, for years, I dreamt my husband was going off with women. The dream went from once a year to once to every two months. He died suddenly. That was eight years ago. I've only dreamt about him once. Can you please ask your guest to try to make sense of this? Okay, well, that's again... A, that's a difficult and complex... It is, and I'm very cognizant of the fact that we're dealing with somebody who's just lost somebody recently, so we've got to be sensitive in that regard. Yeah, died so... Well, it's eight, it's eight, it's eight years ago. Okay, okay? well, it's but still... But the dream is still... And it's still very much active in our yeah. mind. 
initially when she was dreaming those dreams when her husband was alive, it's probably, and again, I'm not trying to be rude yeah. to the lady, but I have to tell you exactly what it means. It can be a little bit of insecurity on her behalf, fear of losing him, of him going away, of, of him maybe not loving her as much as she loves him, and that could have been part and parcel of it. In terms of what's been happening since, what she say now has been happening? She says, I've only dreamt of him once. So obviously he's, he's out of her life, and she's only dreamt of him once in eight years, whereas beforehand, he was constantly on her mind. Yeah, but she was obviously worried. Maybe after, absolutely. After and and the point being that you know, in in the waking life, he's never out of her mind. I'm sure she thinks of him every day. Just so happens he didn't appear in a dream. That doesn't really mean an awful lot. But in terms of her earlier uh, experiences, it's probably just that she felt so much love for him. She was hoping he'd never disappear or leave her. And that ties in with another texter. What about being unfaithful? These dreams of unfaithfulness. Well, again, let's put this in the context. So we, we're all here today, and we all deal in the subconscious, and we're talking to each other. But we all have fears, we all have emotions, and it's not a huge leap to actually think that when you're sleeping, when the subconscious gets to work, some of those fears, some of those phobias, maybe you maybe realize in a dream. So this person saying, you know, is he having an affair, or whatever else, that could be something that maybe she's thinking about in her waking life. Nothing unusual there. Nothing unusual there. Uh, I keep dreaming I can't find my car after being at a shop or in the city. Okay, again, we spoke earlier about vehicles, meaning careers and so on. Can't find the car could be perhaps she's lost a bit of direction in her life. Maybe she's looking to see can she move on in her career, but she's not quite sure what career path she should take. Um, people will be able to contact you by email. Yes. And also robertwilliamsmentalist.com. That's all one word. It is, yes. Robertwilliamsmentalist.com. And we'll put that up on our website Thanks, also. Um, hypnosis. Yes. Um, is it a load of crap? No. Hypnosis is actually as real as you and I speaking. However. Could you hypnotize me now? Well, no. There's a process. I mean, I, well, I mean, the fact is, I'll, I'll explain this to you. Jim. This is how I explain to people hypnosis. When you drove in today. Right. The likelihood is you didn't see anything around you. If, in fact, if you were watching a movie, you probably wouldn't have heard your, your pet animal behind you, your parents come into the room. So what's happening? We're focusing on something and all our attention is on that. So for me to hypnotize you right now, we can do a couple of examples of hypnosis. But if you to get into what's called a profound state of hypnosis, it takes a bit of time. And then I'd have to do the rest of the show. But, uh, <laughs> but have, you might do better than me. <laughs> no, I don't. But having said that. There's a lot of, as I said, a lot of nonsense about hypnosis, you know, people saying that, oh, within, don't look him in the eye or you'd make you look like a chicken. <laughs> it's just, it's silly stuff. But Damon, over the years, I, 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 I've been very lucky in the sense that people and probably some well-known people have come to me to help with phobias. Phobias ranging from, from alcohol problems Absolutely. to genuine phobias. And I've also helped people, uh, some up-and-coming sports people, to actually achieve a bit better than what they thought was possible. So there, for me, where real hypnosis exists. I do believe that hypnosis has a has a value okay. and there are, as you say, especially with sports psychology mm -hmm. and things like that, people have been texting in here as also about, about smoking and things yes. like that, that it can help. It really can help. Without any question, I, I've helped dozens and dozens of people stop smoking. I've helped a lot of people actually with, with drink addiction, with, with serious alcohol problems. And I'm just, just to digress for a second, I'm hearing lately that they want to uh, classify alcoholism as a disease. My own personal viewpoint is that's dangerous. It, it feeds into the subconscious that a disease is something you can't help. And I think if you, any addiction, if you feel I can't help it, well, then you'll probably never never get over it. But hypnosis, Damon, in the sense helping people, help people achieve more, absolutely has been proven over the years. Is it dangerous? In the, in the wrong practitioner, it's quite dangerous, particularly if they've got sinister motives, yeah. But again, let's be clear about this. You will never, ever, ever be hypnotized unless you want to be. And we all, we all have okay. a code of ethics. So, for example, if I was to ask you to do something under hypnosis that you wouldn't do in waking life, you'd just come out and go, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, so David here is on, uh, David Reed from the town. He's here beside us, and he says he's going to be, try to be hypnotized later, and he wants to be hypnotized. Oh, very good. So there you go. Somebody texting in, I dream of losing my teeth. You've dealt with that earlier. Can you please ask... Uh, What's the cause of seeing someone who's died and you're convinced that you're seeing them alive in a crowd? Again, the recurring thing of seeing somebody yeah. that has died alive. Yeah, and again, it's, it's a very, very common dream. Uh, and again, I think it borders on, on still the grieving process. And of course, that kind of is, is self-explanatory in many regards. A dream of um, dreaming of losing your house and moving to a smaller house. It's a recurring dream. Yeah, a, a dream of houses, actually. Houses in dream symbology is meant to have got to do with the person themselves without getting too much into it. If you dream of the kitchen of the house, you dream of your own characteristics. If you dream about a room you've never found before in a house, it's about a hidden talent. So perhaps this person may be feeling that they're downsizing, maybe a little bit of their character is downsizing too. Um, Alice has texted in, I wake up in a cold sweat some nights trying to spit up having swallowed needles. Well, okay, well, that's, that's obviously pure anxiety. Pure that's, anxiety. That's all got to do with something in the waking life that's making her feel that way. The subconscious is working overtime. Uh, I'm swimming in the dark, out far, but not afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, that's got to do, in my opinion, when you've got situations where <clears throat> you're dreaming and you can't see where you're going. It's somebody with quite good direction, that even despite the fact they're in the dark, 
they're not afraid because they feel they're going to get to the destination wherever that may be. It's actually quite a good dream. I used to dream I was on a boat surfing on the waters near the island I lived in once. Someone told me that meant my family had an upset. Two days later, I got a call saying my sister had been involved in a car accident. Does that come back to the precognitive thing? Uh, or? To, to a point, but you know what? I mean, it could be a thousand people that were sent in, only unfortunately that person had came through for us. So the law of average suggests if you tell somebody something enough times, eventually it'll come through. I'm not sure it's precognitive, I think it was unfortunate. Um, deja vu, is deja vu, what is deja vu? Deja vu, essentially, again, when we go to the mind, I mean, I, I suppose without going off in too much of a tangent, yeah. it's, it's my conviction, Damon, that the mind itself is probably still the most unexplored that we have. I mean, we, we apparently went to the moon and stuff like that, but the mind is still unexplored. It was going to be explored with ESP in that throughout the 50s, but then certain movements took that over and used charlatanism and trickery to kind of say, oh, I've got real ESP or whatever. But deja vu, again, it probably borders a little bit on the ESP, which we probably don't have time to talk about. So in my opinion, that would be a sign of ESP, extrasensory perception. We've been here before. It's making a comeback, apparently. Is it? <laughs> right, I want you to predict the future what I'm going to play, what ad I'm going to play next oh, you know, you know, my, my power, I mean, you, you've just had me a half an hour and you, you've got him recording me and just put it in front of me, God, I don't know I, I, I predict you're going to play a song, how's that? Uh, there you go, yeah, well uh, and who's going to win uh, Who's going to win the Waterford County Championship this year? Um, Valley Gunner Clonay, Clonay, it's just, Valley just, Gunner. just about to say that, you read my mind Finally, David Hennessy says, a dream of uh, vomiting major organs I'm the major or stress thing, maybe. Absolutely, and, and it might be. And again, some some dream analysts or dream experts will tell you that's got to do with. I mean, if Sigma Freud, for example, would have been somebody who would have said that perhaps that was a, an inner kind of warning system to the to the body. I don't know how true that is, but it could be. Robert Williams, uh, loads to talk about this. We're definitely going to have you back if you're interested in coming back. Yeah, Thank you so I much am. for coming all the way down to us from Leeds today. And uh, as I said, it's uh, Robert Williams. Um, Mentalist.com. Mentalist we are back with the lovely story of Mary Crowley just after this.